Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insights through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I would like to welcome Nicole Donnelly, who has dedicated the last 20 years to creating exceptional customer experiences. She is the founder of DMG Digital, a marketing agency dedicated to helping B2B manufacturers delight their customers through content marketing and e-commerce transformation strategies. Nicole is also a keynote speaker, podcast host of Tales of Misadventure, and live stream host of Manufacturing E-Commerce Success. I'm so excited to be here with you today, Nicole. Welcome. Thank you, Summer. I'm so excited to be here. I have been looking forward to this conversation ever since you and I first met. I just think you have such a wonderful authenticity and warmth about you, and I just love your energy and what you've created and cultivated for women. So I'm I'm just over the moon excited to be here and be able to talk to you. And and yeah, this is gonna be fun. You know, you're you're making my day. You're making my <laughs> smile even bigger. So thank you so much for those kind words. But this is about you. So let's get started and <laughs> let me ask you a few questions. So Nicole, before we explore your professional journey, can you describe your life in one word to this point? Ooh, immediately the word that comes up for me is determination. Mm. That's the first word that comes up. Like, I think as I look back on my life, the challenges that life has brought me, I've always had this just fierce mentality of, you know what, I'm going to figure out a way to get through this. I'm going to find the strength within myself to persevere. And that's always just been like my, my mantra is just like, just utter determination and this fierce, you know, willingness to just figure it out, find a way. And that's, that's, that's what first came to my mind. <laughs> I love it. You know, that's so important because you can sit and think about it. But that word that first came to mind was determination. Let me ask you a question. Is this something that you were born with? Or is this something that you think you learned along the way somehow? Ooh, I would say both. I do think I was born with like this just innate drive in me to just find my authentic self, live true to who I am, to overcome adversity and challenges and not let them crush me. But I also think part of that has also been refined through my life's experiences. So I think I definitely came to this world with it. And then through the experiences I've had, it's kind of brought that part out of me and almost strengthened it, if you will. So the more time goes on, it just seems to just become even more fierce. (laughs) Yeah, more fierce, more rooted, more of who you are. I absolutely appreciate that. Let's talk about some of the key experiences along your journey that really helps you get to where you are today as both an individual and as an entrepreneur. So tell me about some of those key moments or milestones that may really had an impact on you. This is a fabulous question, Summer. Thank you. Entrepreneurship has been like in my blood. My dad was a successful entrepreneur. My grandfather owned a motel right across the street from Disneyland. My great grandfather owned an oil company. And I also recently found out that I have a great, great, great grandmother who owned a bakery in Copenhagen, Denmark, and she used to cater events for the king. I mean, this legacy of just like fierce resourcefulness and passion and vision from both sides of my family that I feel very like connected to. And I think from the time I was a little child, seeing my dad building his business and his passion for it and the impact that it had on the community and his employees and the people that he was able to impact, including our family. But then also when I was a teenager working at my grandfather's motel at the front desk and seeing people come into the hotel from all over the world, their faces just so happy and seeing that he had kind of created and cultivated this experience and that I got to be part of was really inspiring for me. Like, so I've always kind of had this 
fierce determination to kind of like continue on and honor that legacy, but also find my own way, find my own path forward and create something of impact that would help particularly women. I think I've always been motivated by that. I worked for a wonderful small women-owned business for many years early in my career and learned so much from this fierce entrepreneur. She built this company. It started out as a direct-to-consumer marketing company and evolved over the years, but I watched her build it from this small 10-employee company to now over 50 employees. So being a part of that and actually being able to work directly with her and just see her ability to flex and bend and adapt and her determination as a woman, as a leader was really inspiring to me. And I remember she would work right on the front lines with us whenever we were planning projects. You know, we we did these health screening events out in the community and she would be right there on the front lines, helping set up, greeting people. And she would get right into the trenches. And I just loved her passion and her energy. It really inspired me. And I knew from that from the time that I worked for her that I wanted to build my own business someday. And so now I'm excited that I've finally been able to realize that. So I'd say that. And then, you know, I've had some tough experiences in my life. You know, my parents divorced um, very bitterly when I was 14 years old. And that was a really difficult time in my life, trying to grapple through what all that meant and who I was, what was my identity through all of that, through that experience. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Your parents splitting up, it can feel very like, almost like you've been abandoned in a certain way and having to kind of face that turmoil and having to figure out, I think is something I still grapple with day to day, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's one thing. And then of course, my two beautiful girls who are both miracles, it was a lot of loss and struggle in order for them to be here. So I struggled for years and years and years with infertility and multiple miscarriages and just so much loss and sadness and heartache, but was able to kind of work through that obviously. And now I'm blessed. I have these two miracle daughters, but I would say those have been like, kind of like the core experiences that have really galvanized me, I guess, in my life and my career that I look to whenever I'm going through a hard time. And I think, you know what, I've survived a lot in my life. There's nothing I can't figure out and get through. Thank you so much for sharing those experiences. What I call that phenomenology. We have that phenomenology, that lived experience. These are our lived experiences. These are things that you went through, impacted you. You saw this woman building her business. You saw the ups and downs that she went through. You saw her go through this, but she had that emotional agility, that ability to flex. I love to talk about this because a lot of people will talk about the emotional IQ. I like to talk about the emotional agility component of it because I think a lot of times we don't know how to identify our emotions as we go through these challenging times. And we're like, gosh, let's just get past this. Let's get past this. And yet, if we just sat there for a minute, identified, I'm feeling such and such a way. And we don't have to dwell there. We don't just stay there, but feel that and say, it's okay. It's okay to be here for a minute. It's okay to recognize this and feel this way, but these are the steps I'm going to take. And you saw her taking those steps. Now, let me ask you, when you confront difficulty, maybe, or challenges in your business, how do you confront those? How do you deal with those? And what steps do you take to move forward? Oh, what a beautiful question. Yeah. So I did watch her go through a lot of highs and lows. She, I remember I was at the company during 2008 when she had to lay off nearly Mm -hmm. half the company. I saw the emotional toll that that took on her because she was a woman who led with her heart. Mm -hmm. And I always really related to her in that way. You know, she was not your stereotypical CEO who you think of, right? She absolutely leads with her heart. And so I saw the emotional impact that that had on her. And what that taught me at the time was it's okay that it hurts when you have to make these hard decisions. It's okay to feel the pain of it. It's normal. It's natural. You have to let yourself feel those things. And I would say, I try to bring that to my own business because I tend to lead with my heart too. So whenever I'm faced with like a really difficult decision, I've learned I have to give myself time to emotionally process it before and after, you know, that's, that's something I need. So like beforehand, it's something that I will meditate over. You know, I will go on walks, be as much time as I can spend outside 
really, really helps ground me and center me. There's, there's something so powerful when I step outside and I'm just in nature. I can't tell you, like, it is like my soul connection is, it just brings me so much peace and I feel so much more, it's so much easier to connect with myself when I'm outside. And so I find when I'm stressed or struggling with something, my initial reaction is always get outside, just go sit outside, go for a walk, just let yourself be outside and don't put pressure on yourself that you need to make a decision right away. Just let yourself be, go outside and just sit on it for a little while. So I would say that's one thing. And I think the other thing is giving myself the space as entrepreneurs, we hear all the time, you know, you got to make decisions quickly. You've got to move quickly. Otherwise you're going to fall behind or you're going to miss the boat. I actually find that sometimes I need space because my natural default is to move quickly. And so sometimes I have to step back and be like, wait a second. I know about myself that I'm a mover and, and I'm, I want to move. So by just giving myself a little bit more time to sit and think about it, that really helps me a lot. And then I journal. I journal a lot and that helps me a ton. So I try to spend an hour a day journaling. Not, I don't always get there. I'm not perfect at it by no means, but I try to at least write something in my journal. And usually what that looks like for me is getting in touch with the inner parts of myself, the inner child, the angry part of myself. What are you feeling today? What do you need? The hurt part of myself. What are you feeling? What do you need? And just really trying to give them some space to, like you were saying earlier, to feel what you're feeling. And I, I just had this amazing experience the other day where I play the piano and I hadn't played in a while. And my daughter had brought home this piece of music that was one that my dad used to sing when I was a little girl. My dad passed away two and a half years ago and we had a very complicated relationship, very complicated, loved him to death, but you know, also was hurt very deeply by him. I think a lot of us have complicated relationships with our parents. And I remember sitting at the piano and playing this song on the piano that he used to sing when I was a little girl to me. It was from the music band, that song, Till There Was You. And it's a beautiful love song. And I was just sitting at the piano and I could not stop crying. And the tears just were flowing down my face. And I just sat there crying for probably like, I don't know, a half an hour or an hour or something. And it was just like my body needed to cry, you know? Yeah. And I, I sometimes it's... I think like in this world, when you're a business owner, so much of the time we put this pressure on ourselves that we've got to, I speak for myself, sure. I've got to have it all together. Yeah. I've got to have it all figured out. I've got to repress those feelings and be the strong leader who's going to chart the way. Right. And so I put that pressure on myself and I like, I realized that I need, my body needed to cry and that sometimes I just need to let myself feel whatever it is that I'm feeling. And most importantly, that it's okay. It's okay for me to do that. It doesn't mean that I'm weak. It doesn't mean I'm not a strong leader. It doesn't mean I'm going to fall apart and I'm not going to be able to pick myself up. And if anything, I think it's a courageous act for us to give in and let go and release those things. At least that's what it feels like for me when it happens. It's incredibly cathartic. I love all of these tools that you have in your tool bag to help maneuver and work through those emotions those feelings. And by the way, I was tearing up hearing your story about you playing the piano and the emotions that it brought back about your dad. I think we can all touch back into that, that child, the, that feeling of connection, but you know, when we do, it's okay to honor those feelings and mm -hmm. be in them. You recognize that it actually makes us stronger leaders. Mm -hmm. We find ways to work through and identify the emotion. As a clinician and as a counselor for many years, people would come into my office and I'd have that little sheet with all the faces, you know, oh, the one yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, yes. And yes, I'd yes. be like, okay, I want to know how you're feeling today. Explain <laughs> it out. <laughs> and it's because people will say like, I don't know how I'm feeling or it doesn't matter how I'm feeling. I just need to work through this. Or no, let's stop. Let's take a breather. We actually do need to know how to identify what we're feeling, whether that's yeah. anger, sadness, anxiety, all of these different things so that we can actually talk about them, express this in a way that we can honor that feeling and work through them. And what yeah. I also love that you said is you've been able to take those steps, 
recognize, but also you've been able to take the time to just decompress, whether it be for a walk, whether it be sitting outside, if it's journaling, and that decompression is so important. It gives your brain an opportunity to relax. It gives you the opportunity to be responsive and think more about what the end result is that you're looking for. Yeah. Thank you for all that you've mentioned because there's so much great wisdom here. There's so many great tools that people can pick up on from journaling to taking a walk to just taking a step back to taking the opportunity to find a place or a way to really decompress. And we all need that because entrepreneurship can be a roller coaster sometimes. Yes. And if sometimes, we- all the time. <laughs> Oh my god! Don't want to get caught in the whirlwind. Don't you feel like? Oh, I feel like the only certain thing about entrepreneurship is that it's uncertain and it's going to be a roller coaster. It's so true. That is so true. That is so true. So let's let's talk about your business. Let's talk about DMG Digital Marketing, what it is, and how you help your clients. Yeah. So I started my business four years ago. Next month, I can't believe it's been four years. Wow. We love love, love helping manufacturers. We love helping these small to mid-sized manufacturers who just have built their business on traditional sales strategies and are realizing that they need to have a stronger digital presence in order to compete. I worked for a manufacturing company on the marketing team for many years and was able to help them really transform their business and saw firsthand the impact that it had. And that's what inspired me because I realized there's so many more businesses out there, manufacturers who just need help. They need help with marketing. They need help getting started. And it's a challenge. And so I think those two things, the fact that these companies, they really need help and it's hard work because there's usually a lot of resistance and they just don't really understand marketing. So that determined part of me just comes out and I'm like, they need help. And I want the challenge of it because it's, you know, so so we help manufacturers primarily. Most of our clients are between five and 20 million in revenue a year. They may have like one marketer on staff. And what we really do is try to help them get started with content marketing, just get started with creating content, optimizing your website and really sharing your story and what makes you unique and helping them to show up online in a way that's authentic to them, to their brand, that really differentiates them in the marketplace. And we do that through this content waterfall approach where we'll interview their subject matter experts Mm -hmm. and create written content, but also video content that we can then create social posts for. So it's kind of like we call it the content waterfall and it's a low lift for them. They just, it's an hour commitment a month. And then we create all the content for them. So then now that we can start to you know, really bring the wonderful stories and culture and amazingness that they're building behind the scenes and put it front and center so people get a fit sense for who the people are behind the brand and what makes them unique. And then we also help them with e-commerce readiness. There's just such a ripe market right now for B2B manufacturers, especially to jump into e-commerce. Okay. And we've helped many of our clients make that transition successfully moving them from just having a very standard bare bones website to now actually being able to sell some of their products online and being able to see that open up completely new sales channel for bringing in new customers, but also elevating their internal sales teams to be able to push more of those like repeat standard orders to be handled through e-commerce. So it's, it's really fun to be a part of that process. So that's a long, long rambly answer, but That's what we do every day is just content marketing support. And that also includes search engine optimization, of course, and all of that. So yeah, we love it. We love our clients. We have been blessed with wonderful clients and uh, most importantly, fantastic team who just does great work. Well, that's lovely. It's so important that you really got granular about who you were targeting, who your target client is. I rarely hear folks, and I've had other marketers on here, talk about targeting manufacturers. And that (laughs) is pretty cool. I like that. And my next question was going to be, what is one area of your business that sets you apart from other digital marketing agencies? Oh, I love that question. It definitely is the fact that we love manufacturers and we have experience with manufacturers. I also think the other part of it is, of course, like the the e-commerce support that we bring for those manufacturers to be able to help them navigate that transformation because change is hard. 
it is difficult. It's never easy. And we've been able to help these, these many of our clients navigate through that process. You know, we're going to be a partner who's going to hold your hand along the way. We're going to provide that warmth, that support that you need to really understand your business and really help you navigate through this chain. Cause you know, anyone who's implementing a new marketing program, it's change and there's resistance. And so I think one of the things that sets us apart is like, we really want to be this warm, supportive source where they can come and know that we're going to help them through and make it fun. We hear that from our clients all the time. Like, this is fun. You make it fun. And that's one of our core values. We believe work should be fun. Why not do it unless you're having a fun time? And so that's something I think that we really strive to emulate wherever we go is let's make it fun. Let's make it feel like we're really partners together in this journey and, you know, help you navigate through this transformation. Well, I can appreciate working with people who like to have fun doing their <laughs> job. And it makes my life so much easier. So I know that if that's one of your core values, people are going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Let me ask you, Nicole, what is the goal that you have for yourself and your business this year? Oh, I did my very first public speaking engagement last fall, and it happened to be a keynote of all things. And I've always wanted to do more public speaking. And this opportunity literally presented itself to me. Like one of my uh, e-commerce partners asked me to give this talk. And I was like, how can I say no to this? You know, this is a great opportunity. It's something I wanted to do. And I loved it. I found this new passion. I got on that stage and I lit up like a Christmas tree. And I was like, can I just do this all the time? And I know people are going to be like, you're crazy. You want to get on, you want to do public? I don't know. I'm crazy, but I loved it. So one of my goals for the business this year is really to get out there more. And I'm doing another speaking engagement at an e-commerce conference at the beginning of the next month. And my hope and goal is to try to do to do more of those and try to just bring this message of digital transformation to these manufacturers who really need help and just help pave the way to to show them, yes, this can be done. This is how we've done it for other clients and you can have this too. And I would say my goal is increasing our brand awareness, but also really helping these manufacturers by getting out there and doing more public speaking engagement so they know what the opportunities are for them. Well, thank you so much. We've been through a lot from your personal journey into your professional journey. So as we come to the close of the interview, my last question is, if you were to leave the listeners with one tip to support their digital marketing success as a business owner, what would it be? My tip would be know your audience, know who your audience is and really understand them. Great marketing all starts with having deep empathy for your customer and really knowing what their pain points and their challenges are. And the more that you understand and have compassion for those, the more you're going to be able to come up with creative solutions to help solve those problems. First and foremost, know your customer, get close to them, take the time to survey them, talk to them, have conversations with them, ask them questions, what they love about your business. What are some of the challenges that they're experiencing even separate from what you do for them? Just really try to understand that information first and foremost before you do anything else. Because otherwise you're just doing a tactic sprint. That's my advice. I love it. I knew this was going to be a fantastic conversation. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole, for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. Oh, thank you for having me on. This has been such a fun conversation, Summer. I love it. Fantastic. (laughs) Thank you. You can follow Nicole Donnelly on LinkedIn at Nicole Donnelly DMG and on Instagram at DMG Digital CO. Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great! Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love, and Money Collective, a Core Women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.